Hello everyone, welcome to your Q&A ahead of game week 28 with myself as and she's back, back from her holiday. She's <laughs> glammed up from being on the FPL show earlier and on the FPL pods twice this week. You've been everywhere. As I feel like when you go on holiday, suddenly everyone's like, can you come on? And you're like, no, I can't. I can't for two weeks because I'm away. And they're like, oh, all right then, do you want to come on the week you get back? Oh yeah, okay, great. Suddenly I'm on everything and it mm. happens when I've had an absolutely shocking game week. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to say anything, but Shocker. I'm catching you up. I was, yeah, well, I was like 120 points behind you. I'm like 60 now. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it. You've got a red arrow and I've got a red arrow and you're still catching me. That's how bad my red arrow was. Two red arrows and I got 30 points on you this week. Nearly 30 points. Because yeah, uh, I got 49. Who I gets know. 49 in that 49. kind of week? 49. No Foden. Uh, uh, but uh, you, you, know what we, you know what we both can share in though? What? Emmy Martinez. Oh. What are our goalkeepers? Why? Why do we do it? Ariola for you, 13. Kelleher for me, nine on the bench. We both play Martinez. Oh, dear. So raging. Honestly, when that Aston Villa clean sheet went, I was raging. So at one point, <laughs> I'll tell you a story. So on, on Saturday, we were flying home Saturday. We left Florida Saturday evening, early evening, and got, obviously got back on Sunday. And we, so we, we decided that just before we went to the airport, we'd go to the Florida Mall. We're like, we'll go shopping. So we were in the shops and my my watch keeps telling me about the, the scores. So it pings me and it tells me the Spurs are one nil down. So at that point, I'm like, oh, for, right, raging. I'm, it, I should ruin my mood. I'm in a bad mood. Van der Ven I've bought in. His clean sheet's gone. Right, rah, 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 rah. Then I look at my FPL team and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> what is this? Spurs are losing. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Anyway, thank goodness, by the time we got on the plane, I, I was actually in a shop paying for something when the... Um, Romero goal went in so part of me is like yes Spurs have scored and then I look at who it is and I'm like you're joking because I spent <laughs> about 25 a disproportionate amount of time I spent deciding between Romero and Van der Ven and of course I the picked other one, one. Oh. that doesn't score so I was like you are joking me that he's like I'm, I'm delighted because at least Spurs are winning now but I'm also fuming I also wanted to bring in some but couldn't do it so then when he scored I was like this is just killing me. Then Darwin scores in the 99th minute. So I've got a very excitable husband who's like, yes. And I'm like, no, that's really annoying me because everyone else around me has mm. got him. Then we get home and I'm really jet lagged and really tired. And I'm watching the City game while Ake loses his clean sheet, whilst De Bruyne does absolutely nothing and Foden is going on a riot. And I was just like, this whole game week is in the mud. It's it's funny because did, did you hear, you know, uh, Yellen and I went, went away and she went for Bernardo over Foden and then we watched Foden score a hat-trick yep. um, in that match. And it, you know, and it's it's funny that you've gone on holiday with Lee and he, almost exactly the same thing's happened. Foden's Honestly, got a big haul and you haven't got him. I was just, I was so, and it bothered me so much because when... <laughs> I like, just saw this, I just saw this mention in the chat. I was about to block him or at least put him in a timeout. It's your bloody husband. <laughs> I've had to hear this sob story many times this week. I was like, oh, that's so mean. I'm not going to allow that. Straight in the block. No, nope, it's, uh, it's me. <laughs> Lee, he's upstairs. I'm going to go, okay, he's going to be in big trouble when I see him later. We're going on a date night later. I'm not going to speak to him across the oh, table. Oh, very nice. Very I'll nice. Tell him, I'm going to tell him my sob story over you and over should. and over just again. Just on repeat. Over yeah. Just record it and then you just play a button and it just... Yeah. Keep, Keep Whenever he says something that upsets me, I'm just to hit play on this sub story. And I have to hear it. He was there. He didn't need to hear it. He's lived it. He lived it with me. Uh, amazing stuff. Hello to everyone. Um, <laughs> but not Thanks Lee. for joining us back. Yeah, it's definitely not uh, not Lee or um, the weird people that keep talking about milking that I'm having to uh, to to ban. Have you have you seen those? Where's our, where's our moderators? Let's make let's make Lee a moderator, and then he can he can <laughs> deal with this. <laughs> He's supposed to be working, I think. What's he doing of? There you go. Lee, Lee can sort out the person who's talking about milking. That's going to be very weird in the uh, in the audio version of this. Um, don't worry about it. It's uh, not, 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 not that important. Um, hi to everyone. We are back here to give you some, hopefully, decent advice. I know. It's been ages. It was, do you know what? I was up with Joe last week. We had a nice time. It's lovely with Joe, but it's, you know. There's something something special about our, our Fridays at, at four. It's a lot of um, love in Fridays at four when is. it's us. Yes, and a lot of yeah. panic uh, in the chat as well, which is uh, which is always nice. Yeah. Um, get your questions in, get your super chats in. We'll make sure we can answer them uh, as well. Uh, always ask questions and I'll just pick some kind of at, um, at random. 
let's go straight away to, I just saw one about Solanke. Yeah, I mean, Solanke, right? So Tim WD, Solanke will play, but likely to have his minutes uh, managed. Get Carter says, is Solanke really needed? You've, have you got Solanke? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, cap still, I mean, CG board, am I crazy not to bring Solanke in? What do you think on Solanke? The news has been a bit less optimistic than we were hopeful for, right? Yeah, I was reading, um, before we came on here, I was reading about what he'd said in the press conference. And I actually don't, I didn't take it as badly as I think some people have done. I think a lot of people kind of were like, oh gosh, well, that's, you know. But in reality, he's had he's had limited training, but he'd had limited training the week before as well. And he still started and he still played the game, like all of it. So I think, I don't think it worries me too much like I think mm. he'll still play in both games and he'll still get most of if not all of the minutes in those two games I would expect um I'm gonna captain him I think it would it would tamper my enthusiasm for the triple captain a little bit that mm. news today but I think with those two fixtures in mind even if you even if he was to worst case scenario get 60 minutes in both of those two games you'd expect Solanke to return against both Sheffield United and Luton in 60 minutes wouldn't you it can't. I mean, it can't be like an it's incredibly niggling. serious injury, can no, it? Or he, or he wouldn't have played and started against Burnley. No, and he was talking about how it's it just it's not particularly painful. It's just there. He can feel it. Mm. So it's obviously not causing him that much problems. Otherwise, as you say, he wouldn't have played in game week twenty seven. Yeah, I think like you say, even if he gets. I mean, he, he starts both games unless he gets uh, gets another. Um, you know, gets a knock or something yeah. in the first game. And I think 120 minutes of, of Solanke still makes him the best captain option this I week. Because you could go for Saka. Well, he's carrying a little injury or a sickness or, or yeah. something around. So, yeah, I don't know. He, he hasn't trained. That's what a few people are saying. Limited. Um, he's chat. had limited training. It's not that he hasn't trained. Yeah. It's limited training. But the reason for that is because... Ariola wants him for the two games. Yeah, exactly. So in some ways, it's good that he hasn't been training because he's having those that that it's managed rest. so that he can play um, in the in the two games. Captaincy definitely. Would I triple captain him? I think this would put me off the triple captain. Yeah, I'm him. with you. It would because be. I think you're, there's going to be another opportunity coming with with another double uh, game week, and it might not be as good on paper as this one, but it's just enough to make me think not not to go for it. Yeah, um, I'm with you. Yeah, so uh, that's your answer to that. Um, we have a super chat from JDev. Thank you very much. Uh, already done a minus four for Son and Bowen. Mm -hmm. Only own one double game week player in Solanke. Should I take another minus four for Harlan to Morris? Popular transfer uh, <laughs> this week. Uh, no free hit in 29, um, as already have 10 players in place. Well, so the, the thing, there's two things to say about this, isn't it? That one, if you've already got 10 players, this would give you a full 11, presumably, unless you'd have to bench one of your attacking assets. Mm. Unless it's team structurally that you've only got two defenders. But this would give you 11. So that puts you at an advantage anyway. So that minus four really is like minus two each week. And given that this week Morris has a double, as long as you could get Haaland back in without take, without too much issue following it, like you don't spend the money on something else, then I think I probably would do this to give me a full 11 for the week after and to have another doubler for this week. If I wasn't free hitting in 29, which I almost certainly am, I would, I would do Harlan to Morris. No, I think I would Because I, I think it's three, it's three games versus one. And the one is Liverpool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're ever going to do it, I think you do it now. I, I think do it. Harlan's you know, for... never scored at Anfield either, apart from once um, in the Champions League before he played for Man City, but he's never got a return whilst at Man City at Anfield. Oh, good stat. I'll tell you who has got a return, maybe not oh. Anfield before I do this, but who does do well against Liverpool is Phil Foden. No, at Anfield as well. Two is goals and one assist in the last three oh, at Anfield. They, I've got all the Some, stats for you this Someone's week. been doing her FPL appearances this week. <laughs> <laughs> My FPL knowledge this week is through the roof. So if I don't get a green arrow, I might as well quit. Yeah. Do we have any news on... Uh, <laughs> Liverpool will be asking this. Kelly. Lloyd Lloyd Kelly? <laughs> Is it Lloyd? Is that his first name? It is Lloyd, yeah. Lloyd. Um, is he all right? Do we have any noise, news on Lloyd, Lloyd Kelly? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, Lloyd Kelly, Max Ahrens, James Hill and Ryan Fredericks all remain sidelined for the Cherries. Okay, so... But Tyler Kirk... Adams could be back. Okay, so Kirk is, is is probably going to be my move then uh, yeah. this week. Which I is... think I'm going to do Zaberni. Sorry, who? Zaberni. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. That's okay. what I was told this morning. 
Ah, oh, damn it. Do you know what? I was going to mock you, but then you've, you've got the insides. That's I what I was told this I morning. Was, I thought you emphasized the barn. It's a barn. It's a barn yeah. Maybe. It's Can't barney. remember. Whatever. Barney, yeah. Either way, I think I'm going to go with him because I want the longevity of the Bournemouth defence. Yeah. Are you not going to wildcard straight after 29 then? No, I think... So So my strategy has completely changed. Like I was planning to play through game week 29 and just have like 10 players with a minus eight. Whereas now I think actually... I really like my team for 30-31. So particularly with the transfers that I'm planning to make this week. So in my head, I'm like, well, what I could do then is free hit in 29. I can wildcard in 33, set up for 34 that way. And then I'll still keep my bench boost for 37 strategy. I think mm. that's my current plan now. So in that case, I want to have my Bournemouth defender in play now. If that yep. makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Zubin says, will Adebayo play one game? Doesn't look like it, does it? He's definitely no. out of their first game. I don't think the, he'll uh, play either. Nah, miraculous recovery if he does, but I think yeah. he's he's probably out. Uh, Lewis Benilla says, as in Sam, would you sell Haaland or Watkins? Definitely wouldn't sell Watkins. Agree. Yeah, gotta be, gotta be Haaland. If, you, if you're ever going to sell Haaland again this season, it has to be now. Yeah. Uh, ahead of ahead of the blank and like you say, against, against Liverpool. Uh, Jason Styling, uh, Solanke in for Watkins. Have Haaland and Morris will be free hitting in 29. Good to see you back, Sam. Ah, oh, it's good to be back. Um, this one's so difficult because... the Watkins. I don't... I would not be selling Watkins. I think he could... Like, I've said this a lot this week and people look at me like I'm mad, but I genuinely think if you've got... A, if you're going to captain a single game week this week, I would go for Watkins against mm. that Spurs defence. We haven't kept a clean sheet since game week 14. He's on absolute form. It's, what is it? Three double digit holes in five, I think, for Watkins. Like... The form's insane. I would not be selling him again. Like I think this is a good fixture for him at home. But without free hit in 29. See, the thing is, I also think you're going to want to have Watkins in your team more longer term as well. Like, it's difficult, this. Mm. Well, Solanke comes in 30 with, with Everton at home. Uh, Villa's got Wolves, I think, Wolves at home in, in 30. Not a huge amount in it there. You'd maybe lean towards Solanke in it, but given the fact... Watkins has got what twenty nine goal involvements over the season. Um, I think I think given Solanke's slight injury, I think I wouldn't do it. I think I'd keep Watkins. I mean, you've got Morris as a double game week forward, which is already yeah. You know, I don't oh, think that... I don't think you can sell Harlan either if you're planning to free hit. I think you have to hold Harlan if you're free hitting. Yeah, and no wild card as well. And so no, hard particularly to, with no hard wild to get card. back. Yeah. It's very difficult to to say don't get Solanke because he's going to be like close to 200% effective ownership. He's got two amazing doubles. I don't think he will, As No? I don't think he will because his ownership isn't actually very... Like, I haven't checked today. Let's see how many went up by overnight. But we, we did a pod just and he was at like 27% ownership. And obviously that's just ownership. That's not... So he's he's the 28. most bought... He's the, the 20... most bought player and he's got going to be given the triple captains by people as well. Sure, but he's 20, 28% owned. So we don't normally see players get to 200% effective ownership. I don't even think he'll make it to 100%. Oh, even... he will. I don't he know will. that he will. Mate, I mean, he was he was 55% effective ownership last week yeah. against Burnley. And that's with no captaincies and having not been the most bought player because he had the flag. That will Ar- double around your rank easy. Or no, overall. <laughs> I don't don't you don't use those words no, around I, my that's rank. A serious que- <laughs> that's a serious question. <laughs> around my rank, he's thirty five. Yeah. 35. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I. I don't. I don't. People will be put off buying him if they've not already done it by the comments in the presser today. People will be put off handing him the captain's armband by the comments in the presser today. People will definitely be put off the triple captain by the comments in the presser today. So mm. I don't think his effective ownership is going to be anywhere near. I think he'll still be a good differential captain for okay. us. You, you think you think he could be less than 100%? Yeah. No, I don't. I think he's going to be minimum 120. Interesting. We'll find out tomorrow. We will. we will. How exciting. <laughs> uh, FPL Lighthouse. Uh, oh, what was it? What was our final answer with that then? Are we saying no to Watkins I, to Slanky? You can't sell Watkins. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing. Uh, FPL Lighthouse, what six players are your must-haves for 29 if you're not free-hitting? Watkins. Yep. Tony. <laughs> yep. Son. Yep. Bowen. Yeah. I think he's got to be Bowen. right. Probably put Madison in there as well, to be fair. I'll probably go with the double-up of the Spurs attack. Yeah, five. One more. 
Hmm. Yeah, there's not really anyone that obvious, is this? Maybe another Aston Villa mid. Maybe Bailey. Bailey or, or Douglas Louise. Well, it's an away game that's made me wait to be going mm. Bailey over Douglas Louise. Um, yeah. I mean, we've not got any defenders in there. Pedro Porro's back training. Yeah, but are they, mu- are they must-haves, though? I don't think though? they're must-haves. No, I think there's five must-haves. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it, there's more than that. It's a tricky week, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm looking at, at my team and thinking, I could get out a patched-up six, maybe, for 29 and keep the free hit. Maybe with like a minus four or minus eight, it means not going hard on this game week with with the double Bournemouth defence. Um, it means you know having just six players and a hit, and I'm just not sure it's it's really worth it. But when you think about it, and we can we can only really name five that we would definitely definitely want. The rest are going to be your Elangers, Regulons, Flecken in goal. You know, you take a punt on I don't know like Morris up top. Like it's I don't know. It's, it's no one that really stands up. I mean, they could all do well, but there's not like a really clear. An obvious um, no. pathway. But equally, I think the ones that, like, there are other options. I wouldn't have, but the other options I wouldn't have say were must have. So, like, when I was talking about Porro then, like, I wouldn't say he's a must have, but I think you could have him. Like, I think mm. there's another Spurs attacker that you could have, but I wouldn't say they're must haves, but they're, but he would be a good option. Same with, you know, a Kudos or a Pakatara at West Ham. The same with Bailey or Douglas Deweyza at um, Aston Villa. Like, I think there is enough good choices. They're just not must-haves. So I think if you're looking at must-haves, there's probably five. And then everyone else, like the Doties, the Morrises, they're they're kind of good options, but not must-haves. Would I you could, s- go on, I could easily name you 12 that I think are good options. But would you say, say can, can re- reframe the question then, would you say six is must-have? Like, would you want to go in with any less than that? No, yeah, I wouldn't want any less than six. I, I think For I free? Do, or would you take hits to get six rather than playing the free hit chip? I think if you could get... No, that's a good question. Thank you. I think, <laughs> I think, you need... I think if you're going to try and play through, you need eight. With hits? Yeah. So, so like a minus eight to get eight? Yeah. Okay. And you'd have to carefully choose your minus eight unless you're planning an immediate wild card straight after. Mm. Yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, you free hit, everyone gets twos. You're still going to be up. You're still up. You're yeah. still up quite quite a bit. <laughs> like, you're still up 20 well, points or something. So, so this is the conversation I, we were having on the FPL pod this week. Because, like, Jules is going to have six. He's going to take a minus four to get eight. Um, well, he's got five, sorry. He's got a free transfer and then a minus eight that's going to get him eight. So in theory, if I'd used my free here, I'm already eight up on the game week with from him. Yep. And I've got three additional players. So worst case scenario here is I'm what 14 up because yeah. you know eight plus six before we start i'm eight, i'm 14 up and then whatever happens with the players but the players we've got are going to really cover each other because he's going to have the players that i would free hit mm. in anyway so i'm i'm gonna at least gain 14 points on him and that's where i think the free hit can be really useful yep. because it only takes one of those players that not everyone's got to go off and suddenly you're 20 30 points up it's, it's just we we don't know how how big an impact the free hit's going to have later on in the season. But we know it's going to have a, a, a moderate to big impact now. So I can see why people want to gamble and wait and see what they can do with it in 34 and 37. But it could be you've got half the players anyway, that, yeah. or, or more than half the players that are, that are doubling. The 34 yeah. double's rubbish. You've got to use the bench boost chip as well. You could end up getting that the wrong way around. There's a lot yeah. of unknowns. I agree. And I think, yeah. you know, we don't yet know what 34 is going to look like. Yeah, yeah, there might be some blanks, but also... It, because there's no European football that week, the FA Cup games that get rescheduled could effectively go into the midweek. So actually we might get very few blanks. We might get very few double. Like it's so difficult to know exactly until the Premier League make an announcement. It's difficult to know what 34 is going to look like. But what I do know is that this week with just four fixtures is way, way more difficult to mm. manage than that one. So yes, I might be able to free hit players in who've got a double then. But the reality is that if I wildcard just before it, I'm going to be able to get those pairs on wildcard anyway. Yeah. And I'm going to know what that looks like. Yeah. So I can, I think for me, this this strategy with the wildcard just before 34 allows me to get all three of my remaining chips to line up with the three difficult game weeks to manage mm. in terms of the doubles and the blanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like the fact people are doing different strategies. I like people trying to navigate too. it. I like that Andy North is talking to wildcarding. I like that we're probably playing the free here. I like that people are going in, in three very different, different routes. Yeah. 
Um, I just like the idea that we're going to get certain points from from the free hit. And, and yeah. like you say, there's going to be people scrambling around minus eights, minus twelves, just to be bringing in the players that we're we're going to have. Yeah. For, because for those five that we've named, you don't have them. They're your minuses. They're the they're the ones you're going to be worrying about. They're the ones you're going to be going right. I need a minus four for Bowen. I need a minus eight for Sun. And the reality is that in my head, what I'm also thinking is the players that I'd have to take out to minus these players in are players that I want back again. Absolutely. So if I can do this in a free hit, I'm then not having to take more minuses for 30-31 because I want to hold the wild card for 33. Yeah. It's, it's actually one of the big reasons why, again, I'm, I'm going to be free hitting in, in 29 because if I was going to take out, you know, players for the likes of Madison, for Bowen, um, when I then come to wildcard, my team value is crap anyway. Yeah. So when it comes to wildcarding them back in, I'm going to be losing 0.2, 0.3 million. Mm. I can't afford to, to do that. My... It, you know, yeah. it'll, have such a, it'll have such a knockdown effect on the rest of my team yeah. if I take all these players out, plus the hits, plus everything else. So Plus, yeah. I think if you look at, and you know, from Spurs' perspective, we we have to think about Salah in, in all of this conversation because at the moment, this is something none of us are really talking about because we're all focusing in on the blanks and the doubles mm. and Salah isn't really part of that conversation because the game's against Man City and then it's the blank. But coming out of the blank, we do need a plan for Salah and he obviously costs a lot more budget. If you bring in Son on a free transfer, the likelihood is you're going to have to take him back out again straight afterwards, which is fine. But if you're hitting him in for next week, only to then hit him back out for Salah the week after, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Plus, the week if you're if you're bringing him in permanently with a view to keeping him, well, that's fine. Except mm. Richarlison's two weeks away from being fit, apparently. So if he comes back in in two weeks, Son's going back out. Why is Son really the option you want? Maybe not. So for me right now, wildcarding the Spurs assets in is the better... Sorry, free hitting them in in 29 is the better option because coming out of that into 30, I can then make a better decision about this. Yeah, like Tim W said, there are known unknowns and unknown knowns. Yeah. That's, that's right. All you can do is kind of play what's what's in front of you. And sometimes right. it using the information we've got, that strategy works. I can completely understand why people are doing other ones, but I think in, in after, if, if a few weeks ago I'd made a decision to bring in like Bowen and bring in... Uh, I don't know other players that you know an Aston Villa mid for example as well then you're in a very different position um, yeah. but yeah uh, I'm I'm not um, yeah and, and a good point about, about Salah uh, Tom Johnson says as versus Sam Spurs versus Brighton play Porro uh, or a Stupinan don't play a Stupinan <laughs> <laughs> that's I, all I, I'm going to say on that I mean I was confident last time Spurs played Brighton and it went so badly for us. I would like your opinion on Brighton because I have got Gross currently as my first sub on my bench this week. I don't know what to do with him because it's a nice fixture, it's a home fixture. But I watched you guys yesterday. I watched the highlights of your game last weekend and he got benched, which I think was ahead of because of this game in midweek. But now I'm just like what even is happening with the with the Seagulls at the moment? Uh, we're, we're we're done. Is 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 the answer to that? Uh, I think there's there's too many players out of form. Billy Gilmore, Estupin, and Ferguson. There's too many players injured. Jao Pedro, Matoma, um, Deserby's losing it. <laughs> he's like literally losing his mind. He's going absolutely nuts on the on the touchline. Um, he's already started the things. You know, some mumblings around not happy with the recruitment, not replacing Casado and McAllister, which is is pretty fair, fair enough. Is fair enough. Um, but yeah, I. I, I this is not the time to be playing or buying Brighton players for sure. We've got real issues, and I think Forest are going to beat us. Yeah, I think so they're, we, they're, a, they're a decent side. I think I think we're going to lose, and that's part of the reason why. I mean, I sold a Stupinian last week, and I or the week before, I can't remember now. One of one or the other, I sold a Stupinian at some point, um, and and I've, I'm going to bench Gross this week with the view that I'm going to sell. I might even sell him this week. Like there yeah. is a there is part of me that's like, well, I might might as well just sell him as well and have have two two extra assets for this week because but then it's he's been a great differential for me over the last few weeks. So it is a bit painful benching him because it's on paper it's a really nice fixture. Mm. I just think that the the form and I don't know how you're going to recover from Thursday night. Like how are you going to come out of that in terms of what does this weekend look like? Are you where are you? Like, it's so hard to know with Brighton and, and the form is just not there. So that's why he's on my bench, but it doesn't feel great. The fact he's even getting rested in, in league games, I think shows shows where De Zerbe's, well, where his priority was, his priority was that Roma game. Now that's done. I, I just don't know what he does for the rest of the season because there isn't a settled team. Um, no. And, and CISO isn't isn't ready to be to be playing. He looked completely off it yesterday. Does Lalana come back in? Buenonote is is not really delivered. 
I don't think I, I, I don't know. I think it's um I think it's an easy easy benching for Poro uh, with with that one uh, personally because Poro is being given the all clear right and and like you've said before Postacoglu doesn't say that unless they're ready to come back in no Postacoglu if they, if they're fit they're, if he's trained he plays he doesn't they don't even rejoin the squad until they're actually ready to play so the fact that he's trained today means he's ready now I think given the way that our team is and and how important Poro is to the way that Spurs attack, he'll be straight back in the starting eleven mm. on, on Sunday. It's not a Saturday game either. He's got another day. So I think he'll be straight back in the starting eleven for Villa on Saturday. And, you know, they play a high line as well, which could do really well with Poro. So I think if you've got him, he's got the potential for some attacking returns in this one. Yep. Uh, Bobby Whitby says, I can smell a Salah hat trick against Brighton. Yeah, I think in game week 30, that's when we need to be looking at ways to, to kind of move yep. uh, towards him. Uh, he says, I love that people thought Brighton could win 3 0. What a joke. We definitely, definitely, definitely did not think we were going to win that game 3 0. Um, I went for a score draw more in hope than, than anything else. No way were we ever going to go. Well, go to Rome. We'd win 3 0. No Brighton fan in their right mind would have predicted that. I don't think we'd lose 4 0. But I definitely didn't think we'd 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 win we'd win three 0 For me, it was more the performance that I was yeah. surprised at. It wasn't really the result necessarily, although I didn't think you'd get beaten that badly. But it was the way that you got beaten and how you played that that really surprised me. Because it was the way we were set up. He, yeah. he, he set us up to counter attack, and we don't do that. We you know we we've gone up against Man City and and could dominated the game in terms of possession. I think he gave them too much um, respect. And that does happen sometimes, right? And of course, the, we've got the second leg of all of these fixtures next week. And obviously, that's a home game for Brighton. But you're 4-0 down. So you're going to have to really go for it in that one if you want to... If there's any chance of turning <laughs> oh, it around, God. I don't we're think gonna, We're going to lose about 9-0 on aggregate, I reckon. <laughs> well, you're going to have to You're gonna have to have go for it, aren't you? So, it, And like you say, it was clear from the benching of Gross last week that that's where Deserby's priorities were. Um so you would expect him to try and prioritise this again. And I think that's the other thing, isn't it? That you just have to kind of wait it out and see what happens. But yeah, for me, Brighton are, are difficult at the moment. Yeah. I, I yeah. yeah, Twisted Sparky, I'm a Brighton fan. I hope for a 1-1. That's exactly what I, uh, what I said uh, as well. Uh, super chat from Sam Bonfield Stan. Uh, <laughs> thoughts on Son and Zabani for KDB uh, and Senesi? Yeah. Seems pretty good, doesn't it? KDB yeah. away at Liverpool, Senesi injured. Yeah, Sun playing next week. So if you're playing through, it's a good option. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I think, and the other thing is like, so I, I'm a KDB owner and I don't want to be long-term and that's nothing about KDB because I love him and you think he's brilliant. However, um, I obviously want Salah back in, so I need to lose an expensive asset and you mm. can just have Foden instead and save save the budget you know you don't need to spend the budget on KDB you can have Foden to cover out that Man City midfield so and actually Foden I think will outscore De Bruyne in that period anyway so I don't think it's a downgrade if anything it feels like an upgrade there anyway so I um I would do this yeah so I'd even do a hit for this yeah, so would I. I like it. I think it's it's, it's two just good moves. I, I can't see that not paying off. And you, no. unless unless KDB goes mad, then you're you're gonna that's gonna pay off uh, pretty yeah. quickly. Uh, a few questions on uh, Bowen. Uh, Madasa Hussein says, "Would you do Foden out uh, for Bowen?" Uh, Tom Doherty says, "Given what Sam has just said, would you transfer Gross out for Bowen if you were not on a free hit twenty nine, uh, even for a, a minus four? Bowen for me is the midfielder I'd be targeting. If I if I wasn't free hitting in twenty nine. He would be, of all of them, he'd be the one that I'd be getting. Would I be taking Foden out for him, though? Gross, yes. Foden, I don't think I would. I wouldn't sell Foden, no. I think you want Foden straight back in 30, so I would just keep him. And I also think he could do well against Liverpool. We mentioned the stats at the beginning. He's got a good record at Anfield. He's in brilliant form. He's not going to get benched because Pep thinks he's the best thing in the Premier League right now. So I don't, wouldn't sell Foden. My... This week, my plans have been to get Bowen. That, that's that been my plan. So I haven't done anything because I wanted to make sure that last night Bowen didn't <laughs> get injured or have any issues because I do want to have him more of a as a more of a long term hold, particularly now Kudos and um, Pakatara back because I think he just looks so much better. And watched West Ham last night and thought actually they were unlucky not to return. Uh, Bowen had an absolute sitter, didn't he, in the first half? And I yep. was like, how's that not gone in? But anyway. <laughs> Um, so my dilemma is who do I sell for him? So I could sell KDB for him, just keep the money in the bank for Salah from in 30. That feels like a nice option. I could sell Neto for him. That was the original plan if he was ruled out. However, Neto has been ruled in for this weekend. So then it comes down to a choice between KDB and Gross. And I'd rather keep Neto than I would Gross. Yeah. 
So I've got to decide what my, where my priorities are. Are my priorities to get rid of my Brighton asset? Or do I want to free up some budget now so that I can do Salah? Or do I just, you know, hold it, hold a little bit so that I can... Um, I mean, I think whatever happens, Salah and Foden are going to come in for me in 30. Mm. So, but I, I absolutely would do gross to Bowen if you were not free hitting for yeah. a minus four. Because yeah. one, it... it I mean, Bowen's got Burnley this weekend at home. Oh, and I'm, then really, I'm really the worried about not having Bowen. I'm going to have it. That's my transfer this week. Yeah. I just don't, I've just got to decide who's getting sold. Is it KDB or is it Gross? I think it's going to be Gross that I sell now that Neto's fit again. Mm. Um, that's going to be one of my transfers this week. And I'd, I'd do Damn a hit it. on it. Really like that move. <laughs> either, that's I mean, how I'm going to try and get my green arrow to That's the benefit of having KDB, back. Gross and Neto. You could sell any of them for Bowen. All of them can be sold. <laughs> uh, Henning, uh, a 59 kroner super chat. No Aww. question. Not sure if that's deliberate. Henning, if you do have a question, uh, drop it in below and, and we'll answer it um, as well. Uh, we've got uh, Kieran saying Morris for Haaland. I think we answered that earlier. I think we said yes, didn't we? If you're not. If, if you're, you're not free hitting. If you're not free hitting. Yeah, 29, yes. Yep. Uh, Adam Stevo says, as Zabania or Kirkes in for Senesi. That it's the long-term, is, short-term thing. Yeah, it's... that's my that's my dilemma uh, yeah. this week. I, I think I'm I'm almost 100% going to be wildcarding in 30 anyway because I want to get Salah uh, in for, for Brighton at home, ironically. So I think I can <laughs> I can have a bit of fun and, and, and take a bit of a punt on, on Kirkes. Whereas and I'm going to go the other way, I think. Yeah. And then Zabani's going to score and I'm going to be devastated. Oh, because, I hope so. Yeah. Oh God, can you imagine? If he scores, he's going to go down as like, you know, FPL royalty, isn't he? If FPL he scores, absolute legend. I'm sending you a picture of him in our, in WhatsApp. <laughs> You're going to just get a picture of him from me. You're, and you'll know as soon as it pops up in WhatsApp with a, just a photo, it'll oh. just say photo, won't it? And you'll be like, oh no, I know what that is. <laughs> well, if Kirkes scores, he's going on the you, wall. There you, you go. Can, saying, he, it, yes. saying it right now. You yeah. add him onto the wall. Brilliant. <laughs> Uh, another name, uh, Badgers get a bad name, is uh, swapping KDB for Cloyvert. <laughs> <laughs> that's a move you wouldn't. Weird. That's a move you wouldn't have thought uh, you'd no. be saying a bit earlier on. But I see the I see the logic to it. Yeah, I do. And you know, when you sort the fixture, if you take out game week twenty nine because it's a weird blank and just remove it from the fixture ticker altogether, Bournemouth are really high on the fixture ticker. They're top. So getting some Bournemouth extra players in does make sense, particularly if it then enables you to keep all that money to get Salah. Mm. from game week 30 as well like that's the other thing is that it feels really weird but if you're gonna have to sell kdb anyway to afford salah that's this is kind of where my head goes well at some point i've got to sell kdb anyway because i've got to bring salah back in so why not do it for a player that's going to play twice against two of the worst defenses in the league the, well, yeah. the worst and the third worst defense in the league yep i agree uh, tim wd says only four city players are nailed edison diaz rodri and harland foden started more games than diaz this season foden's nailed yeah. at the moment the way that Pep speaks about him at the moment, there's no... I just Why don't would he see... drop him? Why would he drop him? He's the he best player. He's come out and said he's the best player in the Premier League this yeah, week. He is. If he drops him now, then that is the biggest trolling I've ever seen by Pep. And I've seen a lot of trolling by Pep. That would be the biggest. I think the key the key thing with Foden is he's now doing what Pep wants. And I think yeah. he's, he's, he's been guilty in the past of, of maybe losing possession a bit more. The ball stuck to his feet these yep. days he doesn't lose it he's, he's no. so clever in the way he holds the ball and drives and, yep. and, and plays other players in he's Pep's absolute like go-to now I never thought it would happen I always hoped it would happen but he is he's, he's on a the first level. name on Pep's team sheet yeah, now above is. those four he is yeah I agree I agree completely uh, TSH says Van Dyke, Huang and Haaland uh, to Sabani Bowen and Solanke for a minus eight not using the free hit uh, and need the money for uh, Salah I mean I like those moves i think i like it the only thing I selling harlem for minus eight as part of a minus eight is, <laughs> the only thing i would say is that if you're not using the free hit and you haven't got a wild card what is you and you're keeping that money for salah what is your plan for harlem because you're going to also want harlem back in mm. like i don't think you can make harlem the cash machine for salah because surely you want them both if you're saying you're not going to have Harlan at all and you know that that's the case, then fair enough. You go in with your eyes wide open. But if you're taking money out of Harlan for Salah without a plan for Harlan back and you want Harlan back, that feels risky and a bit yeah. dangerous. Yeah. Also, you're bringing in uh, Zabani and Solanke who neither have a game in, in 29. Yeah. So if you're not free hitting, you need to make sure you've got 
enough players because if you're taking a minus eight to bring in those those two and then you're going into 29 with three or four players and you have to take another minus eight to bring mm. in other players yeah uh, it without, might be worth going for morris for example exactly front. yeah be, yeah. be almost be better with morris and doughty than than these guys although i yeah. think these two are better options i think if you've not got a free hit yeah i agree yeah Yep. Uh, Mahomie says, felt for you in the FPL pod, Jules is having a great season. Oh my God, he is, isn't he? Was that 5K or something? No, he's at 1.7K. Oh my Lord. <laughs> and doesn't he tell me about it every single day? That um, is outrageous. That is absolutely... The, what's his, what's his best thing, ever finish before... 96K. Wow. And that was in the 2019-20 season. He is just having... Do you know when sometimes... You just have one of those seasons and you can't explain it, but everything you do mm. goes golden. It's like that with him at the moment. And he's hilarious because I'll say things like, oh, I'm going to get Rodri for the double. Don't do it. He does it. And then it brings him a load of... <laughs> and then he'll text me just to wind me up. Like I'll get a WhatsApp from him and it'll just be like, thanks for that tip. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill you. Um, to be fair... I was dreading the pod in studio on Wednesday because Ian went above me by two points and Jules is just having a smashing season and Jules loves to wind me up. I think it's like his hobby or something. It's just mm. to annoy me. Um, but and he's he... never been able to in the past because you've always been you've always been thrashing him. <laughs> but he, uh, he was actually much nicer to me than I thought he was going to be. I got a bit of stick, but nowhere near as much as I thought I was going to get. I was... By the end of it, I was like, that could have been a hell of a lot worse than it was. Mm. But he is having a, a, like, in some ways, like I was saying to Ian when we were walking back to the train station after the pod, I was like, in some ways, Jules was behind us on the phone. And I was like, in some ways, I hope he does. I hope he continues to do this because he could, if he carries on like this, he's like 120 points away from being world number one, which, you know, <laughs> when you consider it's not a huge, it's not a huge amount of points. If the sh if his chip strategy goes well, it, it could, he could gain some of that like if he finishes inside the top 1k that would be phenomenal it, yeah, would, it would be a phenomenal thing but then the other part of me is like i'll just he'll never shut up about it if he gets a three digit finish i'll never hear the end of it i i <laughs> i have friends like that where i'm like i really like that you're taking this seriously and i really like that you're you know doing well but not too well there's, there's a line yeah that, yeah. I, lo I love that he's taking it seriously, but he's not taking it that seriously. Like, he came with a piece of paper that he'd ripped out of a notebook, which just had some scribbles on it in pencil. And I was like, what's that? He's like, it's my long-term planning. I'm like, are you joking? <laughs> it's not long-term planning. That's a list of four players that you've got in game week 29 and you haven't got a free hit. So that's not long-term planning, is it? And then when I'm talking about this stuff on the pod, I can see him like watching me intently as to what I'm saying. But he's funny. He makes me laugh, but he drives me insane. Yeah, it makes for good listening though, to be fair. I know it does. Well, <laughs> that's the worst bit, isn't it? <laughs> that's the worst bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, JK Gunner says I'm at 8K. Do you think it's possible to win FPL at this point? Yeah, why not? Look, anything can happen. Yeah. You know, it, so when you think Ian, like I, I think Ian's a prime example of this stuff, right? So he joined the pod in late October, the last pod we did in October. And at that point, he was at 3.4 million. He's now at 200K. Mm. So if you can make the right decisions, it's harder when you're at 8K because a lot of the teams are similar. So finding the right differential, you've got to get it bang on because you, the differentials have got, there's got to be some elements of risk taken, but there's nothing that could stop you doing it as long as the choices that you're making and you get your chip strategy right, then it's possible. It's not likely from 8K at this mm. point, but it's possible. You'd have to gamble. You'd, you'd have there to has go to be against some risks. You'd have to yeah. go against Saka and Haaland probably, and you know, and and try and make it up else, elsewhere because yeah. you'd need the most popular players to to blank and for your players to come in to to do it. Yeah. I'm not saying do that. <laughs> don't you know? Don't get me wrong. Don't ruin your season over it. <laughs> There's risk but reward, right? If your only aim at eight k is to win the whole game, then I think you have to you have to push. Yeah, uh, I agree. And, and and go for it. So yeah, good luck if you uh, if you do decide uh, to do that. Uh, we'll take one more question. And then I'm going to uh, head off. I'm down to Brentwood uh, tonight to see my parents get back for, for Mother's Day. I'm sure you're going to get spoiled on Sunday. I hope so, it? Lee. Are you still listening? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's not his job. It's the kid's job, didn't it? But look, when they're, they're 10 old and enough eight, now. No, when they're 10 and 8, he has got to manage it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, we'll take Glyn Perry's question for our final one. How many double game week players... Uh, do you think is a minimum for 28? We discussed the, the blank players in 29. How many would you want to get for, for 28? 
Ooh, three. Yeah. And who would who would they be? Slanky, Doty. And a Bournemouth and then, defender. And then a Bournemouth defender. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree. I think if you get Morris as well, because you've got a Darwin that you could sell, then fine. But I think three is enough. Yeah. Two Bournemouth, one Luton. Yep, yeah, I agree uh, with that. Perfect. Cool. Right, everyone. Thank you so much. Sam, good to have you back. We'll be back again uh, next week, I imagine. You Any more holidays? I'm not planning to go away anymore. Good. Good. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we will do another one next week. But, yeah, thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody.